Hi everybody, Jeff, the Executive Garden here. Thanks for another episode. Hey, hope everybody's having a, had a good spring and we're getting into summer here in 2016. And uh, hope everybody's getting their gardens ready to go or they're ready to go, they're planted. Or if you're in a colder zone that you're starting your seeds inside and getting ready to get outside. So I get a lot of questions about nutrients for plants. And I did my last uh, video on foliar feeding and I got a lot of questions about macronutrients and micronutrients. So this video I'm going to break it down and give you the basics. Uh, not about each micronutrient but the essentials for growing healthy uh, vegetables and fruit in your garden. And the same would apply for any plant in your garden whether your flowers and so forth. So let me start with the beginning. So there's to start it off with, all of us, you remember, we had our uh, element table, the periodic table of elements back in elementary school, and this will test you to see how much you, you, you remember from back then. But let's get into it as it relates to effective gardening. So essential, there are 16 essential chemical elements for growing plants in your garden. So, and out of those elements, there's 16 chemical elements. Three of them are non-mineral non elements, and 13 of them are mineral elements and each of them are broken down into a category so i'm going to try to put the names of these elements um, on the screen that you're watching so you can follow with me so i'll try to make it as basic as possible because it gets a little confusing so again 16 chemical elements three of the elements are non-mineral 13 are mineral that are essential for your garden so let's start with the three uh, chemical elements that are non-mineral elements, okay? So it's hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, okay? And as most of us know, these are found in air and water, okay? And they're essential to the photosynthesis, photosynthesis product, which takes the sun's light and turns it into energy into producing starch and sugar and food on your plant. So in the photosynthesis process, we all know that the plant takes CO2, uh, carbon dioxide, and H2O, which is water. So that's the, all three of the, uh, uh, the non-mineral elements, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. So it takes carbon dioxide and hydrogen, excuse me, water, which is H2O, and turns it into starch and sugar, okay? And that's what produces our vegetables, our fruits, and so forth. So that's the three non-mineral elements, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. So as it relates to the 13 mineral elements in your garden that are essential for plant growth, we break those down into two categories, the macronutrients and the micronutrients, okay? So in the macronutrients, there's two categories of macronutrients. There's the primary macronutrients that is essential in your garden and the secondary uh, ma uh, macronutrients. So the one that most people know about is the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the potassium, okay? So those are known as the primary macronutrients of the plants. So uh, the N, the P, and the K. And you can either put those, well, if you put them into your garden, I recommend that you do organically, but most people, that's why they use compost. So compost releases large, amount, large amounts of N, the P, and the K. And in many gardens, these elements are depleted because a lot of times plants pull the most on those macro elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, okay? So the secondary macronutrients, which is usually found in soil, but you need to get your soil tested, is calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, okay? So each of those are critical to the growth of a plant, and each of them do different things uh, for the growth of your plant. So again, there's a total of six macro macronutrients, which I just talked about. As it relates to your micronutrients, um, those are also referred to as trace elements. So you see a lot of videos on YouTube where people are talking about applying rock dust, rock dust or other micronutrients into their garden. That is uh, the uh, uh, L, uh, the minerals of boron, iron, chloride, copper, molybdenum, zinc, and manganese, okay? So those are also required. Now the reason they call them micronutrients is because your plants don't need much of them. And typically, uh, depending on where you live, they may or may not be found on the soil, but each of them are essential for the structure and the complexity 
of the taste in your vegetables or fr fruit, okay? So, um, if you saw my last video, uh, we talked about the essential of foliar spraying. So, when I use foliar spray, I do it every two to four weeks. I use a fertilizer. This one's called Bill's Perfect Foliar Spray. And you can take a look at this. This is fertilizer, the 6115, that's the N, the P, and the K, okay? And I use this, it says two tablespoons per gallon, and I spray it on the leaves. And I'll show you the impact of my leaves and what they look like for using this on the N, the P, and the K. Uh, on it every two to four weeks. Now keep in mind, as I talked about foliar spraying, when you foliar spray, watch the last video I did, it's much more effective typically than doing root drench and fertilizing the roots of a plant. 10 times more uptake for foliar spray. And then on the other side, I have micronutrients. I spray and grow micronutrients. Now, I do believe in this, the secondary elements of uh, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur are in this one. Um, and I spray this every two to four weeks. I put both of these together in a combined gallon sprayer and I spray my plants. I'll show you the impact of the spray and I think my plants look pretty good. Very green, very vibrant and even though they're young seedlings they're starting to produce fruit because I'm using all of the 16 chemical elements, okay? Now I can't, well, I can control the chemical elements to some extent. So if you're doing soil planting I, I can control a little bit the amount of uh, H2O, the water, but I can't control the amount of carbon dioxide that goes into my plants, okay, that produces the starch and the sugar in my vegetables and plants. I can, however, uh, control the amount of uh, uh, macronutrients and micronutrients, okay, that go into my plant, and that's what I do with these, okay, I do it every two to four weeks. So the question comes into play, does it make a difference in the taste of your fruit or vegetables if you use all of the mineral elements, okay? So the six macro and the seven micro. And the answer is of course it does, okay? Junk in, junk out. So um, this can be found if you don't use foliar spray or if you don't use organic tablets that contain the macro and micronutrients that feed your roots or if you use spray that feeds your leaves. Uh, a lot of people use compost. Compost uh, like leaves and grass, and if you compost your, your leftovers from your kitchen um, and the carbon that you put into that, that does produce most uh, uh, mineral elements that your plants need, both macro and micro. So every season, if you're not using foliar spray or organic fertilizer for your roots, I encourage you to amend your soil with compost. Compost has all, almost all the micro elements and all the macro elements that your plants will need. But over time, keep in mind during the season, especially the macronutrients, if you're growing cucumbers or tomatoes or peppers, those plants will take that out of the soil and need to amend it with something like a foliar spray or uh, put in more compost into your garden because the plants will use it up. So again, back to my point, there is a difference when you um, grow an apple tree and use all of the macro and micronutrients, okay? So think of it this way, the macronutrients that I talked about, uh, they help produce the flavor, the taste, okay? Uh, the amount of sugar and starch that goes into an apple or a tomato or a grape, okay? Um, the micronutrients, or some people call it trace elements, has to do with the complexity of the taste of the fruit or vegetable, okay? So the macro have to do with the sugar content um, and starch in addition to the photosynthesis process, okay, that we talked about earlier. The trace elements or micronutrients have everything to do with the complexity. So when you look at vineyards that grow grapes and so forth, they use a tremendous amount of those micronutrients or trace elements to make sure the grapes that produce the wine have incredible complexity. If you want richer, more complex tasting fruit, like tomatoes, or um, peppers, or cucumbers, or any type of vegetable, or any type of apple, orange, grape, um, the complexity is increased with the trace element. So uh, some people use azomite, some people use rock dust, some people use foliar spray, but I encourage you to do so because there's a difference between a vegetable and fruit plant that has been treated with good macro and micronutrients and one that hasn't. It's the difference between a store-bought tomato that's been sitting in the store for a week, grown in a big warehouse, 
uh, picked before it's ripe and one that you grow in your backyard that's growing foliar sprayed a two, every two or three weeks or enriched compost. It makes a difference. So let me show you a real example of my plants. I'm going to show you a quick video, then I'm going to end the video to show you um, how green, how lush uh, these plants look when I'm doing this every two to four weeks. They're getting their dose of macro and micronutrients. Hope you enjoy the rest of this video. So what you're looking at here is um, excuse me, is the uh, crookneck heirloom squash. So if you take a look at this, again, these have been sprayed every two to four weeks, and actually they're, they're, they're taking off like crazy. These were about a quarter of this size a week ago, but uh, we're growing crookneck squash in, um, in a container here. It's about a 20 gallon container. And you can see I spray these with macro and micronutrients. Very green, very plush, um, no fruit yet. Over here, I've got some cucumbers. Again, these things, since I've been spraying them with the macro and micro are completely taking off. So um, they're seedlings, but they already have uh, flowers and making cucumbers. You'll see the kale, same thing. Very green, very plush, dill, same thing. Um, and everything, um, even my baby pepper plants are already starting to, uh, as you see, uh, put out some fruit right there. Okay, more dill as well. Um, even herbs, you know, there's an er uh, uh, herb there as well um, with the herbs, and this is Thai basil. Um, this is, uh, they respond well to the micro, micro and macronutrients. So over here is an example of some of my uh, sweet banana peppers. You see these are, were a fraction of the size about a week ago, excuse me, two weeks ago, and now they're taking off. They're very green, very plush, uh, lots of fruit. So. Uh, the macro micronutrients, uh, whether it's in your soil, whether it's in your compost, does uh, help the plant uh, stay very green, very plush, and produce lots of fruit. Let me uh, give you uh, an update of what my grapevines look like because they're also treated with um, the macro and micro uh, fertilizer. So these are my grapevines. Uh, I spray these every two weeks, as you'll see. Um, very green, leaves look great. Uh, some of uh, the grapes are starting to go into grape form, so they're flowering. But uh, as you'll see, there's uh, pretty much, there'll be grapes everywhere, okay? You can focus in there. Be loaded with grapes, and this grape I actually planted too close to my apple tree. So you can ignore the fake snake. If you don't have one of these, they actually work pretty well. They keep, uh, actually there's a lizard on my fake snake, which is not a good thing. I guess he's not worried about uh, the snake at all. But uh, the birds and squirrels seem to stay away from it. That's pretty funny, actually. Anyway, but uh, here's an apple tree. Most people don't know you can grow apples in Houston, but you can if you get the right variety. But look how great those things look, okay? Some more apples back there. But the key is this. Look at the leaves, okay? You can spray, foliar spray, all the elements, the nutrients on your... Um, your apple trees, your vegetable plants, and so forth. But this is what uh, leaves and plants look like that are treated very well with all of the elements, okay? And I don't think my soil um, um, is probably rich enough like some of yours, and I don't use much compost, but uh, I don't think it's got all the um, macro and micronutrients. But, uh, you know, uh, by, by supplementing with that foliar spray, it means it, it does a lot. and. Uh, Using the trace elements and the uh, elements, the macro uh, uh, macronutrients, uh, all of these are doing very well. So, and it's easier for me because I travel uh, often, and um, as you can see here, everything is just very plush. It's not missing any of the uh, nutrients, and everything's doing very well. And you can see here, I've got blueberry plants. I treat with the same thing. Everything is doing very well. Okay, so. Um, I hope this answers some of your questions um, about um, macro and micronutrients and what's effective and when to feed them and if it makes a difference in your fruit and vegetables. It absolutely does. No difference. Junk in, junk out. I encourage all of you to either foliar spray with macro and micronutrients or put rich compost onto your plants so it does have organically all the macro and micronutrients necessary. You can't always control the water, the sunlight, the carbon dioxide. 
but you can control those 13 mineral elements relatively easily and it's not hard to do. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry it's gone a little bit too long. It's a bit of a complicated subject, but I'd like to keep relatively simple for myself and my viewers. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Keep in mind I'll be giving away a grow tower for all my subscribers in the next two to three months that you saw earlier in this video. Uh, until next time, take care. Bye.